Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we introduce to you from the radio's Christmas pantomime, Kong Bear in a Winter Wonderland. Kong Bear of Congleton is a six foot talking bear. He lives in the bear sanctuary in the little town of Congleton. Kong Bear is a very caring bear. He cares about all creatures, great and small, as well as the countryside and the environment. He is known worldwide as an eco-icon and for his kindness and love to all. At the bear sanctuary he lives with his fellow bear friends, Rizzle McGrizzle, the grumpy grizzly bear and Pauline the polite polar bear. All three bears have different interests, but one interest they all share is when it's Christmas time and the snow is falling, they love their Christmas television. I do like Christmas telly, don't you, Rizzle? I do, Kong Bear, but I don't like this Christmas telly. Christmas telly isn't like it used to be, and neither is Christmas. Don't you agree, Pauline? I'm not sure. Maybe. Why do you have to be so polite? You infuriate me. Would you like me to turn the channel over? Give the remote here. I'll do it. Don't go through the channel so fast, Rizzle. You'll break the television. There's nothing on. Where's the Christmas Doctor Who? The Christmas Only Fools and Horses episode. Oh no, Grizzle. You've broken the telly. That's right. The grizzly bear always gets the blame. I don't think it's Rizzle's fault, Pauline. Look at all the lights that are out all over there. I think it's a blackout. A blackout on Christmas Eve? Yes. But I was looking forward to watching the Christmas pantomime on the telly. Well, it looks like you're going to miss it now. The power is going to be out for ages. I can smell it. I have a very keen nose for these type of things. So what are we going to do? I suppose we could spend some quality time together. That's rubbish. Like this Christmas without the telly. It was a cold night as the wind and snow battered the home of Kong Bear and his friends. And although there was a chill in the air, Kong Bear found himself quite warm under his blanket in front of the blank television screen. Hey up, Combat, wake up. Who's there? Me. Who's you? Look at the TV screen. But the TV isn't working. There's a blackout. You've heard of a magic mirror? Yes. Well, I'm his cousin, the magic TV screen. Am I dreaming? All dreams are magic. Who are you? What do you want? I told you I'm the magic TV screen. I want to take you on a journey. A journey to where? Into the television screen. But that's impossible. Where am I? You're in TV land. There's no such place. And yet here you are in it. Kong Bear was sure he was dreaming... For only in dreams could cartoons walk side by side with real life people. He saw a giant cartoon mouse and duck, both wearing clothes, decorating an equally cartoon but rather splendid Christmas tree. But behind the Christmas tree, a gigantic digger loomed. I'm a Christmas tree. You can't calm me down. Kong Bear sprang into action, jumping in between the digger and the Christmas tree. Trees are good for the environment. The digger grew ever closer, but Kong Bear stood firm. He closed his eyes, held his breath, and braced himself as the digger grew ever closer and closer. And then... It stopped. I've saved the Christmas tree. He 
You have my heart racing there, and I haven't even got a heart. It was then the digger sprang into life once more. It scooped Kong Bear up into the air before spinning around and heading off in a different direction. A direction where a cliff awaited. Put me down! Kong Bear began to regret his words. As the digger stopped on the edge of the cliff, it began to tip Kong Bear over the edge of the cliff. Forget what I said. Don't put me down. But it was too late. The digger tipped him over the edge, sending Kong Bear hurtling towards the ground from 500 feet. As Kong Bear hurtled to the ground, all seemed lost until a blue box appeared from nowhere. Where am I? A spaceship. You appeared from nowhere. It's a space and time ship. It's like a whole town inside here. All these lights and controls. You've noticed. That must mean you're okay. Who are you? That's a good question. I know who I was. I'm just not quite sure who I am now. That's the problem with change. A few hours ago, I was someone else. Or rather, I looked like somebody else. And then boom, here I am. Lost my memory, I look different, and I've forgotten how to fly my ship. I've even forgotten the name of my ship, if it ever had a name. If you don't know how to fly this thing, what's stopping us from crashing? That's a good point. What's that flashing light? I know what that light means. It means we're crashing. Hold on. We've crashed, but we're okay. It's the ship's force field. I'll explain it to you one day, when I get my memory back. What if you never get it back? I normally do. You seem very calm about it. When you've lived as many lives as I've lived, you get used to it, sort of. Anyway, we need to explore. Where are we? I'm not sure. There's so much snow. It's all snow. Very Christmassy though. Maybe it's the planet of Christmas. All this snow must have helped to soften our landing. My ship is built to last. It's already lasted several millennia. Or will last several millennia. Time's a strange companion. Whichever point in time you look at it. Look over there. There's two snowmen. What snowmen, Kong Bear? Oh, those snowmen. Snowman number one, snowman number two. They're moving. Snowmen don't normally move. Well, there was that rather nice Christmas cartoon. Now that had a snowman who moved. Always a favourite of mine, that one. You should always watch the snowman Scrooge and the Wizard of Oz at Christmas. Although no matter how many times I travel through time and space, I can never figure out what the Wizard of Oz has to do with Christmas. I don't think these snowmen are very friendly. You can't judge a book by its cover, or a snowman from its snarl. What do you say, snowman number one? I'm an evil snowman. You don't say? I'm an eviler snowman. Two's company. I'm going to freeze you like an ice lolly and eat you. Okay, not too friendly. What about you, snowman number two? I'm going to freeze you like a popsicle, and then I'm going to eat you. Once again, not too friendly. They've got very sharp teeth, and they're snarling. Only one thing for it, run. They ran through the snow with the two snowmen, with jagged teeth giving chase. But luckily for Kong Bear and his friends, 
These snowmen were not built for a chase. They simply did not have the legs for it. That was close, Kong Bear. That's the thing when you travel with me. It's a universe of close shaves. I think I'd rather stay home and miss all the fun and the new friends you could meet with this fella, a third snowman, a giant snowman. It was indeed a third snowman, much bigger than the other two. It was a true giant, with red flaming eyes and razor sharp teeth. This was a snowman they would never be able to merely run away from. The giant snowman hissed at them. You're not exactly a feast, but times are hard. I'll eat what I can. No, you won't. You've forgotten. I'm a time traveller. I nipped back in time and placed a couple of hot water bottles under the ground where you're now standing. Oh, I'm melting! <laughs> well, Kong Bear, I must be off. Places to go, things to see. Do you fancy joining me? Will it be dangerous? Very. Then I think I'll make my own way home, thank you very much. And with that, Kong Bear's strange new friend walked back to his ship and vanished into thin air. I guess this means I'm alone. How will I get home now? Wait a second, I've walked onto ice. I'd better be very careful. I could be in real trouble here, for if the ice was to break... Oh no! The ice cracked and Kong Bear began to fall into the icy water below. But before he did, the magic TV screen swooped down from the air. Hello, Kong Bear. Magic TV screen? Where did you come from? A friend is never far away. The magic TV screen hoisted Kong Bear to safety and set him down next to a sign that said, This way to Father Christmas. And with that, the magic TV screen whooshed away. So, Father Christmas lies this way? He does indeed. Who said that? I can't see you. That's because I'm down here and I'm good elf. I'm very pleased to meet you. And I'm Bad Elf. I'm very pleased to meet you as well. You won't be. That is one naughty elf, not a good elf like me. Are you looking for Father Christmas? Yes, I believe I am. He's that way. What a naughty elf you are, Bad Elf. You're full of misdirection. Now I'm confused. I don't know which way to go. As Kong Bear stood, looking confused as a large pink cat with a huge grin appeared, floating in mid-air, to add to all the confusion. Oh, hey up fella, how are you doing? And you are? I'm the Cheshire Cat. I don't mean to be rude, but you don't sound as if you come from Cheshire. Oh, that is rather rude. Do you know any Cheshire cats that are actually from Cheshire? I don't, when I come to think about it. Anyway, you want to meet Father Christmas? Well, he's this way. That's another different direction than anyone else has pointed to. You're all playing games with me. It was then Kong Bear saw a reindeer amble past, a red-nosed reindeer that walked in yet another direction than any had previously pointed to. If in doubt, follow Rudolph. That's me, fella. I've been out for a trot about. This way to the big lad. Kong Bear followed the reindeer as the snow began to fall harder. Visibility's getting bad. It's a good job I've got my big, bright red nose to lead us. As the blizzard raged harder, Kong Bear found it even harder to see, even with Rudolph's guiding light helping. 
Up ahead, he could just about make out some shapes. As he got closer, Kong Bear realised they were life-size toy soldiers. <laughs> Halt! Uh, state your name and intention. I'm Kong Bear. I'm here to see Father Christmas. I've never heard of you before. Father Christmas does not accept visitors. Oh, you've heard of Kong Bear? He's known the world over for being an eco-icon. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> You're joking. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I, I, I'm a, a, a one toy soldier with a gun. Do you think I joke? I, I, I guess not. There's only one thing for it. Oh, you're coming with us, Kong Bear, as our prisoner. Where are you taking me? To see, Father Christmas. There's no need to take me as your prisoner. I wanted to see Father Christmas anyway. I mean, doesn't everybody want to see Father Christmas? Oh, don't ask us. Yes, <laughs> we don't think. <laughs> We're toy soldiers. The soldiers led Kong Bear as their prisoner. Through the snow, with Rudolph now tagging behind, Kong Bear wasn't too afraid as he knew they were only toy soldiers with toy guns. But he didn't want to make them feel any more inferior than they obviously already were. So he played along. If there was one thing Kong Bear had learned in his lifetime, it was that bullies were always inferior. Here we are, get in this sleigh and wait. Yeah, you're going to have a sleigh ride, you won't forget Kong Bear. <laughs> Kong Bear did as he was duly told and sat and waited in the sleigh. He waited and he waited, which seemed like forever. Then all of a sudden, he saw a large red figure emerging out of the snow. Hey, up, Kong Bear. I'm Father Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. I'm very pleased to meet you. Now, Kong Bear always tries to be honest. He doesn't like people who lie, and he would never like to lie himself. But in this case, he told a rare white lie. For he wasn't pleased to meet this man, who called himself Father Christmas. For you see... Kong Bear could sense there was something a little off about this Father Christmas. Something didn't ring quite true. This sledge is going rather fast, Father Christmas. If you are indeed Father Christmas. Don't worry, Kong Bear, I've got you. The sledge was going so fast that everything seemed to be a blur. The magic TV screen started to glow. Smoke began to billow out, not just from the sleigh, but also Father Christmas's head. There was the sound of springs being sprung and machinery going wrong, before thankfully the sleigh began to slow down until it finally grinded to a halt. Magic TV screen! I'm so pleased to see you. Father Christmas is a robot. What kind of winter wonderland is this? The magic TV screen took up the reins of the sleigh and the next second they were up in the air. They flew towards a magical palace, swooping around its magnificent towers before the magic TV screen gently brought the sleigh down to land. Watching them was a beautiful lady, a princess with golden hair. You have to help me, Kong Bear. The toxic witch has swapped my voice with the voice of a giant. Oh, really? Well, that's not on. Unless you want to sound like a giant. I do not. I most certainly do not. Do you realise it's a Christmas ball tonight? My wicked stepsisters will be there, as well as my husband-to-be, Prince Charming. I hope you have a lovely time. Well, I'm not likely to until I get my own voice back. I like my own voice. Prince Charming likes my own voice. I mean, how will it sound if I whisper into his ear that I can't wait to be married to him in this voice? I'm sure he'll love you all the same. After all, you're still you. 
I think the toxic witch is even worse than my wicked stepmother. Who exactly is the toxic witch? She's the wicked witch's sister and both cousins to my wicked stepmother. Pantomime land is a small world. Do you know why all the toxic witch is the worst witch of them all? Because she's just so toxic. She likes to pollute rivers and seas. She likes to harm the environment. She's the opposite of you, Kong Bear. I'd hate to think what she'd do to you if she ever met you. What you would be such an eco-icon. Kong Bear was counting his blessings that he hadn't met the Toxic Witch. Nor did he ever want to meet the Toxic Witch. It was then he noticed text appear on the magic TV screen. It read, Don't say anything, Kong Bear. We have to help Cinderella. Hold tight. Kong Bear wasn't holding tight when the magic TV screen whipped him up into the air and placed him back down in a faraway land. What happened to your voice magic TV screen? Words flashed up on the magic TV screen again. I'm losing power. And all of a sudden, the magic TV screen went black. It's the power cuts. He has no power. None of us have any power. Look at the land around you. The colour has drained from it. We are plunged into darkness. <laughs> ah, the children of the night. What wonderful music they make. Who are you? I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. Aren't you meant to be a bit of a baddie? Don't believe all the things you see on TV. And don't judge a book by its cover. I am here to help you. And you, you Kong Bear, you can help me. I need all the help I can get. I've got to help Cinderella get her voice back, help my friend the magic TV screen, then find a way back home. Where you can sit in your own blackout. Yes, I know all about your world. Do you not think we can see out of this TV winter wonderland? Times are hard, wherever you are. But with friends and family, love and compassion, we can get through anything. You see, this, this is why I like you, Kong Bear. I really do. I've had my eye on you for a while. I've read your books, listened to your radio pantomimes. You're good. Very good. You can keep your Mickey Mouse, your Peppa Pig, you Kong Bear. You are the best. All you do from your little town of Congleton is amazing. You are known worldwide. You'll have me blushing. It's not just me who admires you, Kong Bear. Here, you have an army of admirers. Let me introduce them. I'm Puss in Boots, Kong Bear, and I'm here to help. I'm Tinkerbell, Kong Bear. You better be careful round here. I'm the Marshmallow King. I'm soft and spongy. All the fees, 33. One in three, 13. Four and three, forty-three. Five and nine, the Brighton line. Ooh. I'm the bingo caller, bingo on the move, with me. Hello, Tom Bear. I'm your fairy godmother, and I can make your dreams come true. You'll see, Kong Bear. They all want to help you. You have an army to fight the Toxic Queen. I don't want an army to fight. Then you have to persuade for peace. Go, Kong Bear, go. And be the hero you always are. To the Toxic Queen, your carriage awaits. A yellow three-wheel van pulled up beside Kong Bear and all the others. Yes, 
It is I, the toxic queen. You may have found my lair, Kong Bear, but you will never escape. Why do you have to be so nasty? Do you like being a toxic queen? Wouldn't you rather be nice instead of nasty? I'm not nice or nasty. I'm toxic. I always have been and always will be. But do you actually enjoy being toxic? Is it fun for you? Of course it is. Why? Because, my foolish little bear, I get to pollute rivers. Which run into your drinking water, which in turn makes you and everybody else ill. I get to control all the energy and set the price so high nobody can afford it. And because nobody can afford it, the electric bills don't get paid and we have blackouts. Look outside your lair. There is no colour or light anywhere. Is this a world you want to be a part of? I'm called toxic. I meant to be toxic. But you don't have to be toxic. You are powerless to stop me. I can stop you, toxic queen. But not by fighting you. But offering the hand of friendship. What's happening? The toxic queen, she's fading away. Her castle, it's fading away. It must be because I've offered love. It has destroyed all the evil in the land. And now I'm fading. Where am I going? I'm back at home. It was just a dream. There's my best friends, Rizzle McGrizzle and Pauline the Polite Polar Bear, asleep. It's me, Farmer Farmer. Come on, bears, the blackout is over. That's the magic of TV and the magic of Christmas. That's me, the magic TV screen, over and out. Happy Christmas, everyone.